In this video, let's see a theorem based on adjoint of a matrix. We already know that adjoint is only possible for a square matrix and if the square matrix is A of the order N, what is the theorem? The theorem says that A into adjoint A is equal to adjoint A into A which is also equal to determinant of A into I and what is I? It is the identity matrix of the order N. Now, if I is the identity matrix of the order N and A is also the square matrix of the same order, that means order N, we have what? We have A is equal to a matrix A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23. Last but not the least row is A31, A32, A33. Let's make it more clear. It is A31, A32 and A33. Because it is the third row, first column, third row, second column, third row, third column. This is about the matrix A which is the square matrix. What is adjoint of A that we need to calculate? Adjoint of A will have what? Will have the transpose of the cofactors. So let adjoint of A be denoted by A11, A12, A13. Then it is A21. Similarly, A22, A23 and again it is A31, A32 and last but not the least A33. So this is about the adjoint of a matrix. The adjoint is what? It is listed as the elements of the cofactors and then you take the transpose. Now according to the theorem you have to calculate A into adjoint A. A multiply adjoint A, right? So that means if this is A, if this is adjoint A, you basically need to multiply these two things, these two matrices. Multiplying these two matrices will again give me a new matrix. So it is a new matrix and it is what? Here it is 3 by 3, here it is 3 by 3. So it is 3 by 3 matrix only. And how the multiplication is done? Let's see. But before that, we'll be using a concept. That concept is what? If I have elements multiplied with their cofactors, then if the same fashion is there, that means an element A11 is there, and that is multiplied by C11 plus A12, C12 plus A13, C13 and so on. Then we get what is called as determinant of A. But if I have something called as a11 C12 or A13 C21 where C is the cofactor then you don't get anything but 0. And if this happens with the cofactors this will also happen with the adjoints. That means if A11 A11 is there where capital A is the adjoint, small a is the element you will be getting the value as det A. But if A11, A12 is there, which are different things, so you will be getting 0. That concept we have to use and solve this problem of multiplication of two matrices. Take this as multiplication case. A into adjoint A is what? You have first row, then you have the first column. Multiply small a11 multiplied by capital A11 plus small a12 multiplied by capital A21 plus small a13 multiplied by capital A31. Now when things are in the similar fashion you get debt A. So A11 multiplied by A11 will give me debt A. But the other things which I already explained you like A12 plus A21 into A21 will give me 0. So it is only and only debt A that I am getting here. Now, what about the first row and the second column? Because it follows as what? First row, first column. First row, second column. Then first row, third column. So first row, A11 multiplied by A12 is what? It is 0. Similarly, A12 multiplied by A22 is 0. Similarly, A13 multiplied by A32 is again 0. Because Things when multiplied in the similar fashion give me what? They give me the debt A. Otherwise, they give me zeros. Similarly, first row and the third column. So, first row and the third column. Here it is A11 multiplied by A13, 0. 
a12 multiply by a23 again 0 a13 multiply by a33 again 0 so here also we will be getting 0 only when do we get determinant of a we get only in three cases the first case was this here the second case would be a22 and a22 the third case would be a33 and a33 in other cases you will not get determinant of a right now the chance or the turn is for second row first column second row first column a21 multiplied by a11 0 a22 a21 0 a23 a31 0 so again we have 0 next second row second column a21 multiplied by a12 0 a22 multiplied by a22 yes the same case again i say a22 multiplied by a22 we get what we get that a and similarly when you solve for second row third column and other elements you will be again getting that a at the last position where you will be getting a33 multiplied by a33 the other cases you will always be getting what zeros now you have something called as a into a joint a and the value has come out to be this if I take determinant of a common from this matrix, keep it in mind this is a matrix. So three times you will not take a, joint, a determinant of a common, rather only once. And that is the case of multiplying by a scalar as we already started in the chapter of matrices. So inside you are left with 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And now what is this matrix? This is familiar to us. This is actually the identity matrix. So that means the value of a multiplied by a joint a has come out to be determinant of a into i. Similarly, you can also solve a joint a into a wherein what will happen? Just this matrix will come first, the second matrix will come second, they will be multiplied. Again, you will get determinant of a only for these three values and then the answer would again be determinant of a into i. So, in this video we saw the theorem that a into a joint a is equal to determinant of a into i and similarly you can also prove that a joint a into a is also equal to determinant of a into i.